Hi, this is Jody DeGroat again from the Albert Wisner Public Library. I am going to do a Library for All program on cherry blossoms. And today we're going to read Sakura's Cherry Blossoms by Robert Paul Weston. And it is published by Tundra Books. <clears throat> Sakura loved spring, her favorite time of year. This made perfect sense. Her na name means cherry blossom, trees that only bloom in spring. More than anything, she loved sitting underneath the tall cherry tree, side by side with Obashan, whose voice was warm like sunshine. Together, they sat in the shade of pink petals watching them flutter. They ate bento box lunches. They told each other stories. I've watched this tree grow all my life, said Obaasan. This is how I learned. Seeing these blossoms in bloom is always finest with friends. Sakura's father would soon begin a new job in America. They would fly across the sea where a new life awaited. High up in the air, it seemed like a miracle racing through the clouds, so fluffy and pale, like rice scooped fresh from Obasan's pot. Their new house loomed up on a street with soaring trees peppering the ground with shadows and light, but none had any cherry blossoms. Luke, a quiet boy, lived next door gazing at night through a telescope. Sakura wanted to say hello, but she was too shy. Sakura's new school was a big, boisterous place where each word was new. They nipped and snapped on her tongue like the tang of pickled plums. Nico became cat. Sora had become the sky. Kutsu was a shoe. Sakura tried very hard, but she often made mistakes. She missed Obasan. She missed the cherry blossoms, their soft and sweet scent. She missed stories and picnics and the whispers of petals. One day, Luke saw her sad and still on the front steps. When I'm down, he said, I find it helps to look up. If you want, I could show you. Sakura saw stars, sprinkles of light, and the moon, pearl gray and shining. Its craters were like wide eyes, watching the whole world at once. There's a chance, said Luke, one of those stars has gone dark, but we still see it because its last rays of light have not yet reached us on Earth. Flowers are like stars, said Sakura. They blossom, they sparkle, and then they fade. So we treasure them because one day they vanish. Luke stood very still. He had never thought of this. I suppose, he said, when you look up all the time, there are many things you miss. Sakura and Luke, soon they were friends who played, laughed, and went exploring. Sakura, for the first time, had begun to feel at home. Between friends, she found her words were limber and quick, with no taste at all. They flipped and curled from her mouth as effortlessly as breath. When the winter came, Sakura's mother told her, we have to go back, not for long, but we must go. Obasan is very ill. Sakura's hometown seemed much smaller than before. In the cold, bright sun, even the tall cherry tree was shivering and leafless. Mother had been right. Obasan was very sick, dozing in her bed, but hearing Sakura's voice, she awoke, her eyes dancing. My little blossom, she cried, seeing you again makes me so happy. It's all that I wanted, only this and nothing more. This time on the plane, Sakura did not marvel at the cotton clouds. She slept, dreaming of a sky, churning with every season. Luke was excited seeing Sakura again, but when he asked her to go exploring with him, she said no. She was too sad. She was worried too. Might she forget Obasan? Her face, her laughter, with no cherry trees nearby. What was there to remind her? Don't worry, said Luke. I have a surprise for you. Just wait until spring. Sakura did. She waited. 
the days grew warmer, and then the entire city burst to life, flowers blooming on every corner. By the river, both its shores blazed bright with cherry blossoms. Huge crowds of people had gathered to admire them. There were pink balloons, music, picnics, a parade, and even a marching band. Sakura and Luke found a quiet place to sit with their families. They lunch and told stories. They chatted, they played, they laughed, and Sakura knew what Obasan said was true. On a warm spring day, watching cherry blossoms bloom is always finest with friends. Now we're gonna go, I'm gonna teach you how to make a different kind of paint, and we're gonna do some work with um, some bubble wrap. Okay, now we're gonna make a kind of paint. I have a half a cup of flour in the bowl right now. I'm going to add a half a cup of salt, and I'm gonna add a half a cup of water. Now what you're gonna do is, you're going to stir this until it's nice and smooth. Okay, once you have it nice and smooth like this, you can add some color to it. Um, today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this one plain. I already have some that I made pink with some red food coloring. So what we're gonna do is we are gonna take two paper plates and I'm gonna pour some of this on here so we're gonna have some of the pink. And I'm going to put some of just the plain white on the other one. And then I'm gonna show you what we're gonna do with these. Um, I have just a, um, a mailing pack, a little mailing envelope. And this has the small bubble wrap inside of it, as you can see. So what you're gonna do is, you're just gonna fold up the bubble, you're just gonna fold up the envelope, okay, so that the bubble wrap is showing, all right? And then, we're gonna take a tree, and you can print these off, so you see the tree, and then what you're gonna do is, you're gonna take the bubble wrap, you're gonna put a little bit of the, the, and you're just gonna do that, okay? So we're gonna be sort of painting with the bubble wrap, all right? And you don't wanna get too much on there, you just want a little bit. So like I said, if you, can't figure out what to do with your mailing envelopes, paint with them. Okay, then we're gonna take a little bit of the pink and we're gonna dab that on. And you're gonna have your cherry tree. Now I've already got one finished here and this is what it's gonna look like. It looks a little bit darker before it dries, but this is what it looks like once it's dry. So it does get a little bit lighter and it just is a really pretty picture. And now that I've shown you how to make the paint and how to color a beautiful cherry tree, I'm going to read one more story. This is called Cherry Blossoms and Paper Planes by Jeff Ayertz, and it is published by Florist Books. Some friends are more than friends. They grow like twin cherries from the same stem, just like Dina and Aiden, who knew what the other one was thinking, even without talking. Aiden and Dina lived on a farm. Dina lived at the top of the hill. Aiden lived at the bottom of the hill. Aiden's mother worked on the farm picking fruit. 
The hillsides were covered with fruit trees, peaches and plums, apricots and cherries, especially cherries, sweet black fruit, sour red fruit, and yellow fruit with a shy pink blush. Dina and Aiden liked to help on the farm. For every cherry they picked, they ate one too. They drew on each other's cheeks with cherry juice. Aiden was as agile as a cat. He swung gracefully from branch to branch. Dina climbed carefully with a bag in each hand, one for the cherries, one for the pits. Dina and Aiden's special game was planting cherry pits in the village, in cracks and crevices, between paving stones, on the green beside the cafe, and the road outside the bakery. The juiciest cherries will grow here one day, said Dina, smiling. And when Dina smiled, Aiden's eyes smiled with her. <clears throat> one afternoon, Dina and Aiden lay on the grass, looking up at the cherry tree sky. Mama wants a different job, said Aiden, in the city. Dina held her breath, then asked, couldn't she do a different job here? Aiden said, we're moving next week. Will you ever come back, asked Dina. Mama says leaving is like coming back, sighed Aiden. Just the way around, just the other way around. Dina shrugged her shoulders. I hate the other way around. A week went by. Dina and Aiden sat in a cherry tree back to back. Come down, Aiden, his mother called. It's time to go. Dina gave Aiden her bag of cherry pits, self-picked and self-spat out. Corey, Aiden's pet crow, hopped from his hand onto Dina's shoulder. Give him your leftovers, Aiden said, and he'll follow you everywhere. Dina waved goodbye as her friend disappeared into the distance. Dina's summer felt long and lonely without Aiden to play with. Corey slept outside Dina's bedroom on the windowsill. He cawed happily when she woke up and flew alongside her when she cycled to school. But even that didn't make Dina feel better. Aiden felt lonely too. From the balcony of his 10th floor apartment, he threw Dina's cherry pits as far as he could above the city. He watched them soar them fall, but they never flew further than the fountain across the road. He wished they could fly all the way back to the farm, all the way back to Dina. Before long, it started getting colder, and Dina's father took her to the city to buy a new coat. Perhaps we can visit Aiden while we're there, he said. Dina smiled. It took a long time to find Aiden's building. Dina looked carefully for the right bell to ring. They went up in an elevator to the 10th floor. Aiden was waiting outside on the balcony, wearing smart clothes with his hair neatly combed. He looked different from the Aiden Dina knew the boy with cherry juice drink cheeks. Hi, he said. Hi, Dina said back. For a moment, they forgot everything. They had been waiting so long to tell each other. Then Aiden said, watch this. He folded a sheet of paper into a plane and wedged a few cherry pits between the wings. He threw the plane into the air. It floated high above the rooftop, swooping down and up on the breeze. The pits fell like autumn leaves around the city. Dina and Aiden turned to each other and smiled. Weeks passed and the wind blew icy cold on the hillsides. Dina sat under the bare cherry trees. She hugged her new coat tightly around her and thought of Aiden far away in the city. Then she got on her bicycle and cycled away from the quiet farmhouse, away from the empty caravan toward Aiden. And along the way, she pushed cherry pits into the frozen ground until her bag was empty. Then she cycled back home. All winter long, high up in his apartment, Aiden folded paper gliders, jumbo jets, and stunt planes. When the wind was right, he launched them away from the fountain across the road, away from the busy shopping streets towards Dina. And along the way, the pits drilled little holes in the snow, like tiny footprints. At long last, the smell of spring arrived, fresh and green. Dina filled her lungs with it. Corey swooped and glided happily between cobweb clouds. Dina climbed on the top of a cherry tree, much higher than she usually dared, until she could see the city's smoke rising in the soft spring sky. Aiden breathed the spring air too. As 
The city's rooftops glimmered in the sunshine. He had only one pit left now. Tucking it into a paper plane, he threw it toward the faraway hills. And as Dina looked toward Aiden and Aiden looked towards Dina, a spark of true friendship flew between them, even though they were far apart. And the cherry trees started to bloom. Buds swelled until they burst into blossom. A carpet of flowers rolled out over the land from Dina's orchards, past villages and farms to the outskirts of the city, through busy shopping streets, past squares and fountains, right up to the doorstep of Aiden's building. Mama, come see, shouted Aiden. Well, would you look at that, she said, smiling as she saw the blanket of blossoms below. It's a trail, said Aiden, and it leads from here too, but Aiden's mother knew exactly where it led. She picked up the keys to their new car and said, a trail is meant to be followed, don't you think? Lanterns glowed in the cherry trees that evening. Aiden and Dina sat back to back beneath the cherry blossom sky. And that is where they stayed all evening together like twin cherries on the same stem. I hope you enjoy these stories. I hope that you will try making the paint at home and try making your own cherry trees. Um, I hope that uh, you stay well, stay safe. Again, this is Jody DeGroat coming to you from the Albert Wisner Public Library for the Library for All program.